Now, when we think about seafaring, early seafaring, we might think about people like the Phoenicians or the Vikings. But actually, the origins of seafaring is much, much earlier and it's tied to early human origins itself. There are two types of evidence in archaeology. There's direct evidence and indirect evidence. And when we're looking at really early seafaring, we're usually dealing with indirect evidence. So direct evidence would be things like the boats or iconography or perhaps harbour infrastructure. But when we're looking at indirect evidence, we're really looking at the remains that we can see that people moved from A to B, travelling across a body of water. So this might be, for example, artefacts found on islands or on land masses which we know were separated by channels of water. So when we're looking at these really early incidences of seafaring, this is what we're looking at. Now, most early archaeology can be contested, and this is absolutely true for the case of the earlier seafaring as well. Um, perhaps you'll be surprised to hear that the really, really earliest predates even anatomically modern humans. And this is the find of artefacts, stone tools, on the island of Flores in Southeast Asia. Now, interestingly, this island was separated and has always been separated by a deep water channel, which would have meant that Homo erectus crossed this deep water channel at some point around 800,000 years ago. Now, this is really interesting because it ties the question as to what is seafaring. Because it's been suggested, for example, by our colleague Cyprian Broodbank, that this is culturally enhanced floating and that there's a difference between seafaring itself and seagoing. But if we take this oh, one-off um, early date out of the picture, we don't really see anything else in terms of seafaring or seagoing until 750,000 years later. When in the same region of the world, interestingly, we see that humans, this time anatomically modern humans, cross from this basin here, known as the Sunda Shelf, onto this continental landmass, now Australasia, but also known geologically as Sahul. So we get this crossing of early humans from Sunda to Sahul, possibly 200 to 250 kilometres, by around 60 to 50,000 years ago. And this is the earliest evidence we have of seafaring which is uncontested. The reason that this evidence for early seafaring is important is that when we look at the archaeological record for these time periods, often what we're seeing are just collections of stone tools. There are perhaps a few bones. But when we actually understand that people were building boats or using rafts, even quite simple technology, we suddenly understand that there was a lot more complexity that we just don't see in the archaeological record. When we're looking at seafaring, we learn not only about the technology of the boats themselves, how they were produced, but also about cognition, about skill, and how people were working together. For example, thinking about navigation and how people dealt with the changing environmental conditions of that body of water. So this is really critical to understanding our human ancestors. So we also need to think about the boat technology itself. At this level, this early prehistoric seafaring, we're not thinking about complicated boats. We're thinking about simple rafts or simple log boats. And these might be made of bamboo rafts or other materials, for example, leathers and skins. But in this area, particularly, people have suggested that bamboo rafts might have been used. We need to think about how many people were crossing. So a genetically viable population crossed this body of water between 60 to 50,000 years ago. And when I say genetically viable, what we see is quickly we see various sites springing up all across Australasia, all across the, the Sahul landmass. And this means that at least 30 adult healthy individuals cross this stretch of water. So I don't think we're just looking at people floating across sporadically. This is actually technically seafaring.